Hello, I'm Irina Bokas. Welcome to the Future of Learning. In a global economy, the benchmark for educational success is no longer improvement by national standards alone, but also how well our schools compare to the world's best performing school systems. Results from the latest program for international student assessments that evaluates learning outcomes at school show drastic changes in the global talent pool. For the most of the last century, the United States was the global leader in education. However, within the last 20 years, many other nations, especially in Asia, have been moving ahead with a lightened speed in how rapidly they expanded their educational system. If you think about it, just by its sheer volume, Asia has the capacity to produce more mathematicians, scientists, engineers, and every other profession. 60% of the world population lives there. And, of course, provided that global spread of technology make it just as easy to create a work team around the world as across a company, our children will be competing in working together with many Asian students and professionals. So what can our schools do to prepare our children for such global environment? Our guests today are Faye Valtadoros, our school's Japanese teacher, and Melissa Bunting, a parent and a teacher who has just returned to Clarkston after two years of living and teaching in South Korea. Thank you for taking your time and being here today. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Melissa. Yes. You have an amazing background. As a teacher, you had an opportunity to teach here in public schools in mm -hmm. Michigan mm -hmm. and in South Korea. As a parent, you also had an opportunity to uh, see how your children experienced education, secondary and higher, in Clarkston and in Seoul, again, South Korea. Right. So, from your perspective, what are the major differences in the way school system in South Korea prepares the students um, to compete and work in the global environment? Are there any differences? Well, that is a great question, and there are differences. Um, some of them are quite surprising, and others, you do expect it. Um, I was teaching at an international school, so my, my perspective is from a a school where 60% 60 60 of the students are from 50 other countries, and the other 40% are uh, Korean, and they have lived three years um, outside of Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, it is their mindset um, to think of school in a global setting, and they understand other cultures, and they certainly try to understand and share their cultures. So there is this innate um, sharing and growth that's exponential with mm -hmm. these kids knowing that they're from all these different countries and they're just their eyes are wide open and they become very receptive to um, the hallmarks of a global society and right. wanting to grow and share um, towards not just their own country's problems and issues but the global problems and issues that are out there today. So you think uh, here in Clarkston, we're a little bit on the lighter side in this respect? I do, and I, and I caution this to say this. It's just, it's really what you're exposed to. Okay. Um, when you're exposed to 50 different countries and you're living in another culture, you have, you know, the, it's almost the reverse is true. It's, the most shocking part I found was the fact that um, education is number one in every way and their that emphasis is, is not term. on sports. So the teams do not have hordes of family and friends and fellow students going to watch their teams play, although they do enjoy playing and winning mm -hmm. and celebrating um, their seasons. It's education and study programs after school, which are the standard operating procedures there. Hogwans are, are huge in Korea. Um, they are their after school institutionalized programs on math and language and mm -hmm. music and even Taekwondo, since that's their national sport. And later, college prep exams, courses. Asia students are enrolled in these daily, and they are at school from early in the morning till late at night. All right, so Faye, you, um, I know, traveled and studied yes. and lived in Japan. Yes. And what we also know about um, 
I think any Asian students, but especially Japanese and Koreans, that they consistently score very higher on international mm -hmm. assessments. And uh, <clears throat> we also know that they contribute substantially to a global talent pool. So from your perspective, do you believe that the students there, especially in Japan, are better prepared to compete in the global environment that the students here in Clarkston, or perhaps it's the same? It's very difficult to compare the two countries because the two countries, the societies are very different mm -hmm. as well as the educational system. Um, in Japan, the focus from a very young age is your core subjects such as the math, the sciences, um, English as well as a very, is a core subject. Um, in that aspect, they are, I would say, a little stronger because they do focus on that at a very, at a very young age. Um, also, cram school, juku, which sounds like the hagwan, hagwan. that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. It's very common for students to take that at a very young age. Um, I'm not sure if it's like this in Korea, but in Japan, at a young age, you want to get into a prestigious elementary school, mm -hmm. which, which helps you do well in a great school, which helps you get into prestigious junior high, and then to get into an even better high school, which you have to take an entrance exam to get into. So you'd want to get into a prestigious high school to get into a great college, because really it's your college and what college you go to that pretty much sets the tone for your future in Japan, sets the tone for your job and where you're going to work. Um, here in America, and especially at Clarkson High School, I, I believe that students are fortunate with what we have available for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, not just with the electives, with the course subjects. We have AP classes, we have the IB program, and of course the world languages. We have four world languages, which is a great okay. opportunity for students to take Japanese, German, French, or Spanish. And any language, no matter what language you take, it opens up you up, it opens your eyes to a different language, to a different culture, to a different world. And for me, with my students walking away, even after two years, walking away from learning Japanese, it at least opened their eyes to something new and different. And they're open-minded after that. So I think in that aspect, they are ready for to become global citizens um, just as much as a Japanese student would be. All right. Um, Melissa, also yes. I have a question regarding your son uh -huh. because he uh, is probably the best example of what... Um, globalization is all about. And mm -hmm. this is in terms that he is an American. Yes. He studies in the University of um, Seoul, right? In uh, it's actually Yonsei University in Seoul, yes. All right. He is also spending this particular year in Hong Kong and Japan as an exchange student from Korea. Right. And that alone is fascinating, but yet it's not a fantasy. It's certainly your reality. Yes. And I am sure it's a lot of parents would like to know what educational experiences here in Clarkston made it possible for him to transition so easily to right. a totally different situation and adapt. And perhaps in general terms, uh, what are the educational experiences that all our students need to be able just to pick up and go anywhere in the world? Right. Well, you know, um, Spencer's not here because he's in Japan, but he did weigh in on this. I sent yes, the question out to him, and he had a lot to say about it. He wants to be a lawyer, and he's a debater. So <laughs> he had a lot to say, and it was well, well said, but um, I'll try to uh, put it in synapse. He uh, really feels strongly about the IB program, the International okay. Baccalaureate program. He was the second graduating class at Clarkson High School, which tells you how strong it's coming along here. Many of these um, IB programs have been around for for instance, the school Anna was at and where I was teaching has had IB since 1980. All but right. for us to compete and be able to rise up so quickly and accommodate students and them to pass the uh, exam to have their diploma mm -hmm. is quite fantastic. Uh, so we're very strong. Our, our family is very strong supporters of the IB program. Our daughter is in it now here mm -hmm. as she's come back from Seoul. But Spencer he really felt the two elements that would help you besides immeasurably going through the IB program, the rigor, mm -hmm. the looking at different viewpoints and perspectives, which is very theory of knowledge, TOK class, where you have to look at all different perspectives, right, and weigh in. Mm -hmm. He also thought the rigor and the critical thinking and the collaborative work and the global um, content, which is 
very strong in IB. It's all about looking at I, you know, the global world. Um, he felt language is key, number mm -hmm. one. And it, like you, he, he felt that you need to have those world languages that are, um, you know, the movers and shakers mm -hmm. in, in the world today. Um, we could expand on that, certainly. I mean, Korea, um, Korean is surprisingly not as difficult to learn as I mm -hmm. thought. And he is, uh, after five years with um, Clarkson Schools, able to speak Korean fluently, but he had the basis of Spanish. And he wanted to give a shout out to Senior Bialis, of course, yes, for <laughs> the rigor that he instilled in him and his development of language. And two, it's that um, Spencer felt that um, spending time abroad and having opportunities in the Clarkson School District, in the Clarkson mm -hmm. community, we may need to expand it. We probably have to go to the foundation for this, but um, where you have opportunities for students not just to um, have exchange students in their classroom mm -hmm. from other countries, but also go and experience or Physical it. experience. Physically go and experience it, whether it's at high school or at university level. Obviously, my family, Anna had it at a high school level. My son had it at a university level. Mm -hmm. Both, either one, invaluable. Either one. And if we can make that happen for our students here, how fantastic would that be? And, and courage, courage, you know, they're young, they're risk takers, and um, the networking capability is incredible when they reach out like that. No doubt. Yeah. I think what I also, since I had an opportunity to read, to read it, it before yeah. that, yeah. I also was impressed when he said that uh, those other students that he meets around yes. the world, how they're multilingual, mm -hmm. and not just one language in addition right. to their native, but a <clears throat> number of languages, yes. and as well as how they're uh, analytical and how they're not afraid to reach out and solve problems and all those skills, which was uh, pretty impressive. Right. They're very interdependent on each other. It is yes. innate in being a, a foreigner in a foreign country. They reach out to each other. And they don't, you can be from Russia. You can be from France. You can be from Australia. You can be from Korea and Japan and Germany. They all gather together because they're still in a foreign land. Yeah, because they mm -hmm. have something that connects them, and mm -hmm. that's being a foreigner. That's right. And it has is, it is blossomed both my children beyond my wildest imagination. Well. With this said, I also have a question that kind of goes to both of you. Um, since we're looking at Asian perspective, and we talk a lot about the outcome of education, and we're wondering what the um, education should be about. Is it just about learning the facts, or it's about something else? So what do you believe educational system in uh, Japan and Korea value the most in their students and nurture? What do they want their students to become? as a result of the secondary education. Can I defer to you first? Oh, OK. okay. <laughs> um, in Japan, I would say a lot of it is perseverance. Um, just being um, able to do things on your own, but really work with the group. They're very group oriented in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in the elementary and junior high, they have lunch. They eat lunch together in the, cafeteria, in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And one week, five students will be there setting it all up, serving the lunch and everyone else eats with them. The next week, it's five different students. So they're working together to get the goal, which is to eat lunch and to clean up after them themselves. Also, they clean schools in Japan. They clean their own schools. It's not so, a bad idea. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely, it shows a sense of responsibility. And saves money. And saves money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they work together to get the job done. And this still is instilled in them um, when they get into the high school mm -hmm. and even just in life in general. They're very, uh, very much working as a group, working together. Well, that is really teaching a lot about the collaboration yes. and yes. being responsible for others. Uh, yeah, in Korea, I, I, I feel it's a different tone. Um, definitely education is number one. I mean, they, they're in school, like I said, from morning till late at night. And as a, at a young age and all the way up. So that's a big part of it. But they also stress, besides math and science, is music. Music's right. big. And um, all of them know Taekwondo. <laughs> I can't <laughs> help but say that. <laughs> They're all in Taekwondo. Everyone knows Taekwondo. Uh, but also, they all have an instrument to play. And usually it's uh. strings or piano. Um, it's of that caliber. And their goal, their goal as as parents and the Korean parent 
and I don't want to speak for all of them, but for the majority that I met was that their kids go to a prestigious college, mm -hmm. that they take care of their family. Yes. Uh, it's very common for um, young adults to then turn around and be be successful and take care of their 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 family. So their parents, their grandparents, they may all live together, and they'll be responsible for them. So it's very important for them to make a good living. Yeah. And um, you know, the other part about Korea is it's the the most wired city in Seoul is the most wired city in the world. So technology wise, they have they have grown leaps and bounds since 1980. They are um, on. There's a word that we say twice in Korea, and it's called pali pali, and it means hurry, hurry, and they're always in a hurry to be doing things. You know, okay. they're always in a hurry, so they're always rushing to get to the somewhere. next level and somewhere exactly. And the parent, the Korean parent, hopes the kids are pali pali up the ladder of success and become somebody. That's right. That's right. Hey. It's like in think? Japan is the same in aspect yeah. in that um, the oldest son usually t lives with the parents yeah. mm -hmm. and they take care of the parents and they have a very high respect for the elderly, for their grandparents, and they take care of the family. Mm -hmm. And that's what their job is. Since, so you're, since you're teaching mm -hmm. Japanese, mm -hmm. uh, what exactly do you do in addition to create this sort of awareness in our students and how do you nurture the global citizenship? I suppose, in them while doing so? Well, one thing I think is very important when learning a language is learning the culture. You truly need to understand a culture to understand the language. Right, absolutely. Um, so a few things that I do is, I mean, I talk to them about my life, my time in Japan, various situations mm -hmm. that I've been in and stories, as well as just basic cultural information. But I have a unique exchange program with a sister in Chiba, which is about an hour away from Tokyo. And they come here every March. Uh, this year they are bringing 16 students in March, and they come and they stay with my students. They do homestays, mm -hmm. and they come every day to school and do presentations in English about Japanese culture. This is wonderful. It is amazing. Um, my students getting to have somebody in their home with them, somebody who's from a different country, and just the stories, and they come as strangers, but they leave as friends. Oh, absolutely. It is a great, it's an amazing experience for my students, for the Japanese students. It's helping to bridge that gap that mm -hmm. between Japan and America. We talk to all the students in the building, we take tours. Um, I've invited other classes to come join the presentations. So that right there, as you were talking about exchange students, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, although this is just for a week, it's still, it's the best week of the year is when our exchange students come. Um, and then in, in return, I go to Japan every other year, mm -hmm. and we go. To the, we do a travel a year for a week, and then the second week we go to our sister school, and my students do presentations in Japanese on American culture. Nice. And we do homestays yes. there. That's that's fabulous. And again, they if you know if somebody hosted a student here, then, they usually go to Japan yes. and they get hosted by the same student. So again, that friendship yes. just becomes stronger and stronger. Yes. And I have students who've kept in touch with their exchange student for eight, nine years now, and they become great friends. Right, thank goodness for technology, because now we mm -hmm. can keep in touch. Oh, yeah. And that's the other thing, too, is that we yes. are able to do that. Um, speaking of which, we, we are, we, I just filled out an application. We should have an exchange student from Korea living with us next year. That's right. wonderful. So we want to keep that relationship going and that cultural experience. Definitely. And, you know, I feel like we can relate to someone who's from mm -hmm. Korea, even though we were in an international school. We are certainly exposed to the everyday life, so um, yeah, we're looking really, we're really looking forward to having that exchange student with us for a year, I a high school student. Great. I think it's important for people to open up their homes mm -hmm. to to exchange students, even for a week. When um, you open I, your home, you open your heart. Yeah, it's kind of comes yeah, together. Yeah, they 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 see the heart of America right in your home. It's a great experience for everybody. Talking about authentic experience. Well, Melissa, I wanted to thank you, and I wanted to thank you, Faye, and I also wanted to thank. Thanks, Spencer, for oh, his contributions. Sure. I also wanted to add what he was uh, saying, and we kind of touched on it mm -hmm. before that. A lot of times, um, our students here um, don't see beyond our state or our country at the right. best. And if you ask our high schoolers where do you want to go as a college, it's going to be at Michigan State, U of M, and perhaps something outside of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, your son actually mm -hmm. offered 
quite a different range of universities that should be something our students should consider as well. Yes, there are, um, in each country, international programs. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned um, Hong Kong University. He mentioned Australian National University. He mentioned Yonsei University, which of is course. the Underwood <laughs> College where he's at. And he mentioned um, the University of Kyo, it's K-E-I-O, Kyo oh, University. Kyo. Kyo University, yeah. <laughs> where he is now. Cool. Um, yes. So, and I think University of uh, Tokyo mm -hmm. would have that as well. Yeah. There's so many yeah. international programs. And the thing is, is that, you know, he, of course, he went brave as he was with his entire family. Mm -hmm. However, 95% of the kids that are in his go program by go by themselves. Yes. Yeah. And yes, I had a lot of co-eds at my house every weekend having home cooked meals and having uh -huh. a family experience at our yes. house. Yeah. But there's people out there that will do that in every mm -hmm. country. And so you're not alone. Absolutely. You're absolutely not. Matter right. of fact, it's surprising how much you are in a collective of good people wanting to help you succeed. Well, that's a good way to meet good people. That's yes. right. Well, thank you again. And today, I believe uh, we need to consider what we want for our children as the outcome of our children's education. While educational processes certainly are different from around the world and they largely depend in reflective of cultural values and norms, the desired outcome of education seems to be global, a determined, critically thinking individual contributing to the world. Or as Howard Gardner said, wit, grit, and good citizenship.